Hello, Carrie Robert here. Today in our Atomic Spotlight, we're going to look at a new atomic test that was added today by Prashant Pulisetti. In the description here, they talk about how we can use NSLOOKUP to query a text record on some domain and whatever's returned, we could use that to execute. So it's kind of obfuscation mixed in with command execution. In this case, the new test was contributed to technique 1059001, command and scripting interpreter using PowerShell. In MITRE, that falls under the tactic of execution, but it could also easily fall under defense evasion, as we'll see during the demo today. There are many ex examples of malware using this. Here we have a tweet by Josh showing some malware that did just that. PowerShell, it uses a dot to execute whatever gets returned from a NS lookup on inventivecyber.com. So whatever that text record is, is what ends up getting executed, although it's not easy to, or there, it's impossible to tell what that's gonna be just from looking at the code here. So let's play with this. The first thing we need to do is set up a domain with some text records. I'll take you over to my Namecheap account where we could set up some text records and I can show you how easy that is to do. And we could put with text records, we can put anything we want in there, including PowerShell commands. Okay, here we are in my Namecheap account. I own a domain called dc8training.online. So within here, I can go to my advanced DNS settings and it lets me put in custom records. So here, to add this text record that we can end up using to execute PowerShell code. I will add a new text record. And for the first one, I'll just put in who am I, click the check mark. And for the second one, I'm going to put in a download cradle, which I'm going to explain later. which is a link to a PowerShell script with a call to invoke expression and invoke web request here. Okay, now that we created those, we may have to wait several minutes, up to half an hour probably, for those changes to propagate through DNS servers on the internet. But we have our text records, which now we can go and re retrieve those from the internet using NSLOOKUP or any DNS lookup tool, and then have PowerShell execute what it finds here. Okay, now that we have our text records set up, we can start experimenting with executing what gets returned in the text records. So we can do an NSLOOKUP with a query type asking for the text records, and we can do it on our DCA training dot online where we created our text records and we're going to do the lookup using google's dns server so we have a few different text records we have the who am i command that we added and we also have the download cradle let's talk a little bit about what this is and how it works for those who aren't familiar so first i'll take you back over i posted something as a gist online just an easy place for me to post some code and here it is it's some ascii art and it just writes that ascii art to the screen in red it's a little powershell script so if we take this url we can go into powershell and we can use something in co called invoke web requests which lets us fetch things from the internet so and we can give it that url and in the response we can start to see the beginning of that ascii art here although it's hard to read and what we're doing here is building up to understanding this thing that we put in the text record online for our DCA training online domain name. So IWR here is actually just an alias for invoke web request. So an easy short way to say the same thing. So we could, instead of typing out the full invoke web request, we could just type IWR and we get the same response. So if we actually want to execute that code, that comes back as a string and just gets printed to the screen, we can use a PowerShell command that called invoke expression. It also has an alias of IEX. So if we look up those aliases for IEX and IWR, we see they're just shortcuts for invoke expression, which is how you 
tell PowerShell to consider a string as a command. So for example, if I enter a string of who am I, it just prints who am I to the screen. It doesn't actually run it. But if I wanted to run it, I could say invoke expression. So treat this string as a command or as code. And then it actually runs who am I and tells me who I am. So we need to do the same thing. We, we do the IWR to download our PowerShell script as text, but then we need to use invoke expression to actually make it run as code. So now we can combine those two things. So we can say invoke expression of what we download IWR from our PowerShell script. I had to reduce the font size a little bit to make it look right on the screen since it's really long. But that's pretty cool. We we created what is called a download cradle. So it downloads the script that we want to run or the commands we want to run and then it executes it with I invoke expression. There are many ways to do a download cradle and they're desirable for attackers to do because it kind of obfuscates what the attacker's up to. Plus it's one simple command line and you can run any number of commands because on that online script you could fill it full of everything you want to run and you don't need to fit it on the command line. So I also have here a page loaded. It's a gist put up by Harmjoy of eight or so different download cradles. So here's a similar one, Invoke Expression, but it's using the older PowerShell, before PowerShell version 3 way to download a string from the internet. Then there's the PowerShell 3.0, a really popular download cradle. And there's lots of crazy ways to get stuff from the internet and execute it with PowerShell. There's even in here an NS lookup version, which is what we're looking at today in our Atomic Spotlight, something very similar. So now that we've demonstrated how the download cradle works, and this is the text that we put in our text record for our domain. So we have that here. And we also have who am I as a separate text record. So if we use that like the malware was using it, they were referencing all this text gets returned as a, an array. So this first line is line zero, one, two, etc. The way you can access the last element in an array is with a shortcut just ne negative one that means the last thing in the array so if we do that we get who am i so that's what would be executed so let's go ahead and tack on the rest of how the malware was using it they were calling powershell and they were using the dot operator which is similar to invoke expression saying treat what's inside as a command and run it so with this, we are able to run who am I and get the response here. So we're executing the code that's stored in a DNS record that we control. And yet it looks like we're just doing a DNS lookup. Let's also do with that with our more complicated answer. So if this is line minus one, this would be minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven. So let's try doing the same thing with the seventh from the last one which should be our Invoke Atomic Red Team ASCII art. And there we have it. And of course, in malware, these commands that would be run would be something probably to give the attacker command and control of the victim computer. Now, how does all of this play into Atomic Red Team? Well, if we look at Atomic Red Team technique 1059001 and we scroll to the bottom for the last added test we see this test abuse NS lookup with DNS records red teamers can avoid or malware can avoid typical download cradles with IEX and IWR using a technique like NS lookup so here we have something that looks familiar to us now we're doing an NS lookup in this atomic test though they're looking up example.com <clears throat> we don't have control of example.com example.com really is just for examples i'm not sure who exactly controls it but they do have text records that we can look up now because we don't want to actually execute something that comes from example.com because who knows what will happen with those text records in the future we don't really as blue teamers and defenders we don't want to be executing something that we're not sure what it's going to be. So for the atomic test, we've added this special function, NSLOOKUP. 
And what it does is it first calls the real NS lookup, passing the same arguments. So it's actually going to do an NS lookup with type query type of text on example.com using 8888 as a DNS server. But then it's going to send that to outer space. So out to null, it's going to get thrown away. And then this function is just going to return an array of two items with the last one being who am I? So this wouldn't typically be in malware, but we're re redefining what NSLOOKUP does to do the original thing, but then we're controlling what actually is going to get executed for the atomic test, which is just who am I? And in this way, it's a realistic emulation because if we're looking at the telemetry from our systems, we will see the PowerShell calls NSLOOKUP, does a text type query, DNS query of a domain, and then it executes the return response. Let's go back into PowerShell and now switch over to Atomic Red Team, invoke Atomic Test, T10. 59001. Let's show the brief details to list out all the tests because we need to know what test number the DNS test is. And it looks like it's test number 22. So we'll specify test number 22 is the one we want to run. And before we run it, let's say show details without the brief and see the test. And we see that it's just creating that fake NS lookup function. So we can control what actually gets run regardless of what gets returned by the text records on example.com. And then the line we expect, the line we've seen being used in malware. So let's just take off the show details and it will run this. And as we expect, it just runs who am I, which was returned from the NS lookup call. So this is great because we just emulated a malware technique in a way that recreates the same telemetry, but also in a safe way for blue team testing.